Well, hello. I am going to show you how we are going to do a digital mosaic uh, using Google Drawing. Some of you may or may not be familiar with using Google Drawing, so I'm going to show you how that works. I'm going to X myself out. You don't need to see me. So let me explain first what a mosaic is, and then I'll show you how we're going to make one. So a mosaic is a work of art created from tiny fragments of tile or glass. Here's a nice tile mosaic of a dolphin. Um, you might have a mosaic um, backsplash in your kitchen, for example, made out of tiles. Uh, there's a vase over here with pieces of tiles. There's a beautiful mosaic picture on the background there. But they can be sculptures, you know, park benches, you know, churches have lots of, uh, sometimes have mosaic designs in them. Um, but because we are virtual, we are going to do a virtual or a digital uh, mosaic. If we had real tile pieces, it would be cool to do that. Uh, but we don't. So, all right. Here is a little close up of a piece of a tile or a mosaic. And you can see, you know, the, the space between the tiles, we're going to be talking about that today. Uh, if you're doing like a kitchen black backsplash uh, or any mosaic, uh, the color between the tiles is called grout. And you get to choose whatever color you want. And it will probably depend on what type of picture, what colors you're using in your mosaic design. You want to pick a grout color that will accent that, contrast that a little bit. If, for example, there was a lot of black tiles in this design, you wouldn't want to use black grout. If you had a lot of black tiles, maybe you want to use white grout. So it just depends what image, what colors you're using in your design, and then you can choose a, a grout color to make it look all better. All right, so the grout, the space between um, the tiles is called negative space. Okay. Uh, this, your image that you're going to be creating with the tiles, or actually when we are using actually different shapes, uh, we're going to draw different shapes to make our tiles. That's what we would can call the positive space of our design. Okay, so it's just art terms, positive and negative space that I'm going to be talking about. Uh, here are some student examples that did this exact project. So you get to do whatever type of object, subject you want. Do you like food? Maybe you want to do a taco. Maybe you want to do a piece of pizza. Uh, ice cream cone, doesn't matter. You get to choose whatever you want to do. Uh, any kind of character that you want. Your favorite superhero, cartoon character, uh, a real person. You get to do any image that you want. So... Let me show you some other examples, and then I will show you how to do this. Um, now, this owl was done in the same way that I'm going to show you, but they didn't leave space between their shapes to put the grout color in. So even though this is super cool, and I really like the colorfulness of it, um, for our assignment, I want you to leave spaces between. So you can see the sunflowers on the next one. You can see that there is the shapes are not touching. There is space between them. So when we do ours, that's what we're going to do. Now, I love the colorfulness of the owl. So, you know, keep that in mind. You don't have to use realistic colors on whatever it is that you're making. You can change up the color scheme in any way that you want. Uh, here's another couple good examples. Though, even though the Among Us dude is quite popular and they did a pretty good job, this particular one is not meeting my specific requirements. I have uh, a slide at the end that tells you the specific requirements, and one of those is you are going to have to have a minimum of 100 pieces. Might seem like a lot, but once you kind of get going on it, it's really not a lot. Um, so you can see here that these are big, big pieces, and they could have broken them up into smaller pieces. So even though it's a cool and they did a good job, 
it's not going to meet my, you know, for, for an A minimum requirements, that doesn't meet it. So they could easily fix it. They could go back and make some smaller shapes instead of those bigger ones. But, you know, it's a cool, cool start. So you can do people. You can do a real person. You can do cartoon characters, like I said. Here's Mr. SpongeBob. Always cool. Now, you can just do the actual image or, or the person or the object, whatever it is you're working on. You don't have to do the background unless you don't have enough pieces. You know, if you kind of roughly, you know, I'm, I'm not going to go through and count every single one up, but it's going to be very obvious to see if your pieces are too big. If your pieces are really big, you know, yes, I will count. Um, but if it doesn't look like there's at least 100 pieces in here, then yeah, you might want to break up the background too. But if you have at least 100 pieces in your main object, you don't have to do the background. All right. Now look at this dog. Once again, just like that owl. Fun, colorful, but they didn't leave space for grout. So I kind of kept it as an example because it's super cool. And another example of how you can change up the colors, the color scheme. But I want you to leave spaces for the grout color. Here's maybe you want to do a sports person or, you know, this is super cool. You get to choose whatever you want to do. Here's a few more examples. Now, I like this. How See how the even, the, the, the space between each shape is very even and the shapes are even. Okay. Um, that looks really good. Here, super cool image. Notice how they kind of lined up the shapes and they're all very similar. Kind of want to avoid that. Uh, you want mosaics look best when the shapes are kind of a variety of shapes um, and they're not all like lined up in a row. Okay, and there's some spaces here that there aren't tiles. So you got to kind of want to avoid that. But overall, it's a good design. Even Miss, Mr. Winnie the Pooh here, super cute. The only issue with this is the space, the grout, the negative space between the yellow, uh, there's there's a lot of space. There's a, like a little too much space. You want a little space between each shape, but you don't want too much. All right. So you got to keep that in mind. And I'll show you how to do that here in one second. This, this one is actually a, a teacher example. I did not do that. A friend did, but I thought it was super cool. Uh, the Notorious RBGs was Ruth Bader Ginsburg's nickname. She was on the Supreme Court, made a bunch of laws to give women equal rights. We need to thank her for. Uh, so I just thought that was a really cool image. Um, a super cool documentary about her on Hulu. If you got Hulu, you should watch it. It's called RBG. You'll learn a lot. All right. Another couple really good examples here, though this one, the shapes are a little too big. Got to try to avoid that. Um, but the other one is really good. All right. Uh, video game controller. We got a horse. Once again, the tiger, super cool. They didn't leave space for the grout lines. But it's awesome, though. All right. Can you hear my dog snoring in the background? that's what you're hearing. All right. Uh, I'm not going to click on this video tutorial right now, but I just want you to know that it is here so that when you're done watching this video, uh, if you need to rewatch anything that I say, so, or when I start explaining how to do this, you can click on this video uh, link and it will be there and you can rewatch it. Okay. So everything you're listening to me now will, is being recorded. All right. So some key tips. I already told you a few. You can create your own design. You do not. I'm going to show you how to uh, use a photograph, a, a picture of a design, and you're going to put the tile pieces on top of it and then delete the photo. So you can do that. Or if you want to create your own design uh, that you come up with, that's super awesome. But I'm going to be showing you how to do it off of an image. All right. You do want to pick, pick up if you're picking an image, you don't want the image to be super busy, like a lot going on in it. 
um, you really want to focus on one object. Now, there can be different colors in that object, but you don't want a ton of different things in the picture. It'll just get too like hard to, to say, see what's what. I'm going to show you how to vary the size and shape of your pieces when I explain how to do this. You can use any colors you want. You do not have to match the color that you see in the, in the photo. You can if you want. Uh, I'm going to talk about and show you how to keep the negative space, the space between the tiles, which, you know, is the grout kind of color, how to keep that kind of even because that makes it look best. And I'm going to show you how to kind of zoom in and enlarge your, what you're working on so that you can make um, smaller shapes if you need to. So for me, for this project, your, your design needs to have a minimum of 100 pieces. It's really not that hard to do. It, it, it's quicker than you think. Um, so you basically, you need to avoid making big, big pieces. Um, so that won't happen. All right. So I'm going to show you now how to do this. So I'm going to X out of this. Now, you need to first go to your Google Drive. When you go to your Google Drive, uh, we're, we're going to create something new here. So you're going to click New. And when you click New, you don't see Google Drawing come up. You need to click hover over More. Once you hover over More, then you'll see Google Drawing. And you click that. Okay. So this is what you see when you open up Google Drawing. There's lots of things Google Drawing can do, but for this project, I'm just going to show you how to do what we need to do. And the first thing is, uh, if you right click on the somewhere on this picture, you can change this background color. Now, if you want black grout, obviously you can change it black, white, whatever you want to do. You really sh need to know what picture you're going to do before you can maybe decide what color grout will look best. You can always start with something and change it. It's not a big deal. I know what picture I'm doing and I've already decided that like a blue grout is going to look best because I do have black in my photo. So I don't want a black grout. Okay. Once you've changed the background, then you can choose your photo. So if you go to insert an image now, Maybe you have a photo on your Google Drive saved somewhere that you want to use. Maybe in your Google Photos, uh, you have a picture of some beautiful sunrise or sunset or something you want to use. You can use that. Um, but I'm going to search the web, and you can do that too. And I've already decided that I'm doing this picture of Snoopy because if you know me, you know I like Snoopy. He's my favorite. So I just chose this one here. I'm going to insert it. So you can look on the web, find an image of something you want to do. Now, you want to make this fit, uh, this space as big as, you know, as, as best you can. So I'm going to click the corner here and drag it. You don't want to drag from the top or bottom because then it will distort the proportion. Um, so that's good. Just kind of get it as large as you can. I'm going to kind of center it. This is all going to be the background anyway, the, the grout the blue background when we're all done. So um, it doesn't have to like go to the very top. That's okay. So now once you are ready to begin, like I said, you should probably go to the size here and kind of zoom in to at least 200% to start. Now I actually like making it even bigger. Uh, and it's easier. So I, once you go to 200, you can zoom in some more. You can keep zooming in some more and it'd be really good. So, I'm gonna, But I'm going to stop here. There's really only basically two tools that we're going to use to do this. We're going to use what's called a polyline. If you click over here and all the different types of lines you can draw, polyline is there. You're going to click that. And once you do, you kind of click, this is, this is where it's important to have a mouse because uh, you have to kind of click. You're going to drag, click click every time you click it's going to stop the line and then when you go back to the beginning it will close the line and now you have a shape that can be filled with whatever color that you want now it's going to default to white and i'm using i'm doing a white section here so i'm just going to leave it white but it's also outlined 
in black here. Now you can decide to keep that black border or you can make it transparent so you don't see that. That's up to you. Um, but so now that that's all the defaulted, I'm going to click, 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 click. Every time I click, it will make a shape. So I'm being very conscious of where I'm starting. So there's kind of an equal amount of space between each shape. You know, I can kind of look and see where it's going. Um, click, click, click. You have to go back to the beginning or uh, it won't close the shape and then you won't be able to fill it. So here I got an interesting shape. I'm going to go like here. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to go up and click every time I'm clicking, clicking, clicking. And um, you can see here if if I don't close the shape, it's just going to like the line's going to be there. I have to get to the beginning and then you'll it'll fill in like that when it's closed. So you're just going to continue clicking and drawing these shapes. Now, let's say I want to do the green section over here. I can I can start and I can make my shapes the same way. But once I want to do this green section, I can go to the fill bucket and say, no, I want a different green. I want that lighter green or I want a darker green or I can go to a custom color and kind of pick whatever kind of um, green I want. You don't have to stick with this exact. You can you can change up your colors any way you want. Um, so now that green has been selected, it's that's going to default to that. So I can do this whole green section now that the green is you don't have to go back and like change it every single time. OK, now um, that didn't it looked like it closed, but and then I started to draw something else. So if that happens to you, just click that uh, line, that little cursor there and um, it'll, you'll get get out of it. But then you have to go back and click the polyline again. So click. I'm being I'm like I say, I'm, I'm trying to be conscious of the space between each each one. There's that color that I chose uh, because I clicked out of that. I got to go back. All right. But now once it's chosen again, I can just continue to draw. All right. I'm trying to leave the same amount of space in between each shape like that. Now, if I if I draw a, a shape and I don't like it and there's too much, you know, like, oh, my gosh, what's going on here? I don't like it at all. I'm, it didn't close. Oh, no. What am I doing? Uh, OK, like what the heck happened there? Then just hit the undo. It'll disappear. OK, so if you kind of get into that situation, you can just delete it. Let me show you. I have been working on the Snoopy for a little bit now, so let me show you. Uh, how it's looking so far. Here, here it is. So you can see here that I've already filled in uh, the whole face here, the goggles, the helmet. I'm working on the scarf now, but this is the cool thing. This is what I you need to understand. Um, once, as you are working, you, what's really handy is you can click that uh, pointer here. Once that pointer is clicked, then you can click the it's highlighting the actual photo that I've been working with that I inserted that I inserted there. If I hit the backspace button, the photo will disappear. And now I can see how my mosaic is looking because the photo isn't there. So when we're done with this, you're deleting the photo just like I just did. And then what you're going to be left with is just the mosaic design. That's how we do it. It's pretty cool. Now I can click undo and the photo comes back. So as you're working, you're going to want to do that back and forth a few times. So you can see, oh, yeah, there's a, there's that piece right here, the scarf. I should probably work on that next. You can kind of see if there's any spaces that you're missing and how it's looking. All right. So now if I want to continue, I can zoom in. OK, I was working on the scarf section here. All right. The scarf section, I, I really like zooming in even more myself. It makes it much easier. And I'm going to, it's still on the green. Now on this one, I've, I left the, I left the um, black outline on this. Um, so I just kind of liked the way it looked. So you guys, you can make that a choice. This is probably going to be green because I haven't changed it yet. Oh, it's white. So I'm going to go back to red. And so now I'm going to continue working on 
the red scarf section. Once you get going in a section and the color, it does get a lot quicker. You might think that, oh my gosh, it's going to take forever. But um, like I say, once you get going and get the hang of working this, it's it actually goes quite quick. Okay, So you can see here as I'm working on, I'll back it up a little bit, as I'm working on the scarf. So I'm just going to continue working on the scarf and working my way down. And then when I am done, I'm going to hit the backspace and delete the original picture and you'll have a cool mosaic drawing, which I think looks pretty cool. So that's what we're going to be working on for a while here. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what you do. This video will be on the Google, on the slideshow, uh, on that one slide that you can click and rewatch anytime if you need to be reminded on how to do something. But you can ask me if you have any questions. But it's pretty easy and looks cool when we're done. All right. Good luck.